the one thing that the 5th edition modules by Wizards of the Coast and the Pathfinder and Starfinder Adventure Paths from Paizo have in common is that they are epic. There are these grand save the world adventures for us to go on and I think they're a lot of fun because everybody loves an epic, right? Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Dragonlance, the Avengers movies. They're all these big epic stories that are just a blast for the audience. But not all great stories are epics. In fact, when I think about some of my personal favorite stories, a lot of them are incredibly intimate. I mean, nothing in the grand scheme of things other than to the protagonist. Green Street Hooligans, Goodwill Hunting, 12 Angry Men, some of my absolute favorite stories of all time, and none of them even come close to being considered an epic. So I wanna talk a bit about the intimate campaign. We're gonna throw out the epic Save the Realm Dungeons and Dragons campaign, and instead we're going to think smaller. I wanna look at an example from the R.A. Salvatore Dread series. So Salvatore's first installment in the series was the Crystal Shard, a big Save the Realm story. Now as a fan of Bob's series, I'll honestly tell you that I thought the Crystal Shard was rather boring and predictable. I actually had a hard time finishing the book, but flash forward two books later with the Halfling's Gym, and I consumed that in one sitting. The difference being that the Halfling's Gym had turned this big, bulky, predictable epic into a personal and intimate story of survival and rescue filled with personal motivators for both the protagonists and, more importantly, I think, the villain as well. And I think it's a great embodiment of a small D&D campaign. Dredst had already saved 10 towns, but now out in the wilds of the Sword Coast, no one knew or cared. There was no help, no perfectly segmented guild to grant him boons or aids or use of their all too perfect teleportation network. The entire fate of his quest lay squarely on his and his friend's shoulders alone. For all that he had done for the realm, he was still just one person in a sea of people, all with their own goals and motivations and fears. So this brings me to my first tip, which is to create conflicts in stories that will only matter to your players. By moving away from the X monster or villain is threatening this entire town, city, or region, and into the much more personal conflict of danger to a loved one or struggle for self-survival, that will go a long way towards creating a much more intimate campaign. If your story or villain is so large that the town guard would need to get involved, well, then that can put you in a bind of creating a story that personally affects the players without simply having the problem dealt with by some other force than the PCs. Which leads me into my second tip, which is to completely 100% throw out the royalty. But before I jump into this, I wanna give a huge shout out to my sponsor for this video, Miniature Market. I have been a huge fan of Miniature Market for a while now, and I've recently totally fallen in love with their tiny terrain line. These things are awesome in my home game. And what I dig about them, honestly, is really just how affordable they are. For a few bucks, they've totally transformed my home game. And I can slap a few of these things down, out and on the table. My players, they just love it. So uh, go check out the Miniature Market Tiny Terrain line. They've recently added some new sci-fi pieces as well. So if you're a big Starfinder fan, go check them out. I'll put a link to it down in the description below. It can be an easy crutch to fall into as a dungeon master to have the PCs dealing with an issue that puts them in contact with really anyone in charge of a kingdom, a province, or even a small city. In an intimate campaign, the story should be much smaller and personal to your players. People in charge are busy. They simply shouldn't be available to just help. The urgent struggle that comes from chasing a villain across the land to save a dear friend from being handed over to a loan shark shouldn't be sidestepped by having anyone in charge and with resources help. It's a lot harder for the players to simply ask for help from their powerful friends and allies if they don't have any powerful friends and allies. Tip number three is to give your antagonist leverage. This is a wonderful little trick to draw players into more personal conflicts without calling in outside aid. If you have three casters in the party, give your villain an anti-magic stone. Want your players to escape the bonds of servitude to the local Pasha and street gang in Kalimshan? 
Let your players know early that the Pasha has a magical set of scrying eyes checking in on them constantly. This is a campaign ripe for roleplay and is miles away from the blow up the Death Star epic level plot. Tip number four is to look for obstacles that don't involve swordplay. Maybe your players do want to reach out for help, but the next day, the captain of the watch they tried to secretly get in touch with is found dead, along with seven civilians that had nothing to do with him, all assassinated by the guild to send a message to the players. Maybe the players can't just directly attack the villain because he's the hand of the king and any such fight would simply be fruitless. Or maybe your Kryptonian superhero PC can't just blast through his arch enemy's base because he always keeps his fortress insulated with kryptonite. And tip number five has to do with the villain of the campaign in that sometimes a good old fashioned revenge story can make for a personally engaging arc. PCs killed a few bandits out on the road. Maybe their leader starts to track them down to make a statement. Did the player's actions against a seedy gangster unknowingly foil a noble secret plot to gain station over a rival? Then maybe they become his new obsession. Or to turn things around, maybe your players didn't actually get there in time to rescue a dear friend and mentor from a brutal death at the hands of a bounty hunter. And now they're out for their own form of justice. So now I want to kick it over to you guys in the community to see what tips you have for running smaller, more intimate campaigns for your players. Also, do you think new Dungeon Masters are being conditioned by these big level 1 to 15 adventure modules and adventure paths to create their own homebrew games that way and in that style? I'd love to know what you think. I want to give a shout out to all of the kick-ass patrons over at welcomeadventures.com. If you like what I do on this channel, you want to support more content like this, then head over to welcomeadventures.com to snag some rewards for yourself. If this is your first time here and you love role-playing games as much as I do, I'd love to have you subscribe. Every week I put out new videos on GM tips, player tips, tutorials, and more. So if that sounds like something you might be interested in, just hit that subscribe button right there down below, somewhere, somewhere right there in that vicinity area. And, uh, and come join us. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Cody, and as always, may your games be filled with awesome memories and even better friends. I'll catch you guys next time. Yeah.